All right, I just got on the Emirates airline gondolas. They are perpetual motion. They don't stop. So the big concern about gondolas is you're going to have to go and stop and go and stop every time one happens. Nope, the way it queues up is you have a compression system where all of them come back to back. So you can just slowly walk on nice and easy, but they never slow down once they're up in the sky. So you've got about a one, two, three, four, you've got about a five gondola queue that goes nice and slow, and then they space out. And then eventually, once that one gets up to a certain height, it's going to kick off, and then I'll go. I think there's something to be said for looking at transportation solutions that not only get us conveniently where we want to go, but also increase the quality of life and make it an enjoyable process. Because the reality is, if you make transportation enjoyable, people are more inclined to do it. Or if it's miserable, like some transportation solutions, nobody's going to want to do that. So now, uh, there's a couple of things that they haven't done very well here. Um, there's a lot of criticism for this in that it was extremely expensive. And one of the reasons why it was so expensive was because they made it primarily for tourism. Um, as you can see, the, uh, uh, the, the gondolas themselves only hold about eight to nine people. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but it's primarily tourist driven. And anytime you're looking at transit solutions, you should never build them around tourism. You should build them around the locals. Um, this is something I learned from one of the most innovative and bright young minds we have in Tampa. Uh, urban planner Josh Frank uh, shared that with me uh, when I shared with him my idea for creating the rooftop city and having aerial gondolas, um, or what I like to call sky lifts, uh, in ta the Tampa area. But look at how beautiful this is. This is an experience where if you could imagine, instead of, you know, driving across one of the bridges, could you imagine being able to take this over the Hillsborough River into our downtown from, say, Ybor, or not Ybor City, from uh, uh, Harbor Island or Davis Island uh, or now the west side of Tampa, which is going to go through massive redevelopment? Um, what better way to get across the river than through the sky? They can go up and down very steep inclines. This is a technology that's proven. It's windproof. It's cold proof, it's heat proof. I'm not sweating, I've got air conditioning in here. If it's cold, it can turn on the heat. And when you think about the ability to go to work and come home from work, what a great way to de-stress than to just get on a gondola and just enjoy a peaceful ride. They're fast, they never stop. Now, a couple of other things they've done is because this is tourist driven, well, the gondolas themselves are kind of small. What we really need are the 20, 30, 40 person lifts that can carry mass amounts of people all the time. You're a captive audience inside here, so this lends very nicely to a private-public partnership where corporations could adopt the pods and then they could run their own commercials. There's a screen here which is not being used for anything, uh, but that could be a commercial the whole time. Advertising uh, great things in Tampa it could be something advertising a corporation. So if you adopt the pod, you get a 30 second commercial. Lots of opportunities here for a really cool experience. And did I mention it's up in the sky? I mean, how cool is this, right? Could you imagine coming to work or coming home from work, waving at some neighbors going by, hey, how you doing? Not a bad way to live, right? Let's think a little more creatively here. Here's something else. When you look at the affordability of this, so, subway, gonna cost you about $400 million per mile. Light rail is gonna cost you somewhere between 40 to $160 million a mile, depending upon what research you read. Are you ready for the, the cost of this? $3 million a mile. On the high end, $12 million a mile. My guess is ours would be closer to the three end because we're not going up steep mountains and having to get people in and out of remote areas. This is relatively simple. And the other thing that's really nice about this is the footprint. You know, it's, it's a pole. <laughs> Think about the amount of zoning and destruction that has to happen to put light rail getting downtown. It's not gonna happen. I mean, it could happen, but the amount of time that it would take to get that approved and go through be another 10 years before we even start digging a uh, shovel in the ground. This here's just, it's, it's, it's a dang pole, right? The, the footprint inside the city would be so much less, so much easier to get up and running. Let's create the rooftop city Let's get some aerial sky lifts. Let's truly become an innovative city, one that deserves the respect 
worldwide and gets people wanting to come and check it out. All right, we're coming down to the landing area now. You can see how they built up the four gondola queue. Nothing needs to stop. We don't need to have start and stop. Some other benefits about this, no noise pollution. It's quiet, floating above the sky. People talking about drones in the sky. Okay, well, drones are great, but it's gonna take a long time before the technology exists to where you can have silent drones that can lift multiple bodies at one time. Do you really wanna live in a city that's got drones flying above your head at low altitude, buzzing and making incredible amounts of noise? Or would you rather just have something peaceful floating above your head like this? 